am Chastity Euler, Northwest Ohio Territory Manager with Pioneer, and we're here the first week of July um, on our 6th 90th, 90 degree day. Um, so pretty intense heat and not a lot of moisture over the last month. We're here at Kevin Holman's farm near Napoleon, Ohio, and we're in Kevin's Pioneer Enlist E3 soybean plot. So it's a great time to talk about Enlist E3 soybeans. Pioneer is a, a leader in the Enlist E3 technology and a lot of great things to offer with this technology. So first off, it's a three-way um, stack soybean that we have glyphosate, glufosinate, and 240 choline uh, tolerance in this, this particular um, Enlist E3 technology. So tons of flexibility from a standpoint that you can apply the glyphosate and the 240 choline or the Enlist 1 or Enlist Duo products all the way up through the R2 uh, stage. It also makes great flexibility in our burn down that we can apply our 240 choline products and then plant right into those uh, burn down type applications. Second um, is Pioneer has over 11 varieties in that 2.2 to 3.5 maturity. Um, so tons of varieties and tons of different agronomic um, and defensive characteristics with yield. We just happen to be standing by P31T64E and P32T26E, um, which will be leading varieties in the Pioneer lineup for Northwest Ohio and fit across a lot of our variable soil environments. So with that, we won't make Kevin stand here in the heat any longer, but a little bit about your operation, Kevin. Uh, tell us some things that you've experienced this year and a little bit about your experiences with Pioneer. It's been a great spring to get started, but it's been uh, kind of backwards from there after we got going. Um, been 90 plus degrees here for about a week or so, and dry conditions have continued since we, since the beginning of June been doing this for like I said 30 plus years and have enjoyed every bit of it and got a lot of opportunities and and uh, things here going at our operation and uh, Alec here would like to share some of the things that we're doing as far as uh, granular and stuff like that. Yes as Kevin said uh, my name is Alec Trucor I'm new to the team I'm, I'm from around the uh, Sylvania Metamora area from Northwest Ohio and uh, our new business that we're going to bring on is called Next Gen's Crop Solutions and this offers everything from soil testing, fertility recommendations and also nutrient management plans as many more will follow as well. But we are uh, powered by granular agronomy and granular oil products that are a part of the Corteva and Pioneer um, accommodations. But as Kevin said we're excited about to get started with a lot more new technology to come and I think John has a little bit more to say about the, the conditions this year so far and take it away. Yeah, Kevin mentioned how hot and dry it has been and as a result of heat and continued dry temperatures, we're starting to see stress in both corn and soybeans, corn leaf curling, soybeans flipping their leaves. These are natural responses to the dry weather and the heat. However, as it continues in the coming days and becomes more severe when we might see some yield impacts beginning, especially getting close to pollination timing. One of the other things that we're starting to notice in corn and soybean fields are potassium deficiencies, some of the yellowing along the edges of corn and soybean leaves. This can occur even in fields where soil test levels are adequate. As soils dry and water is limited, the plants can't access nutrients like potassium the way they need to. Um, this is one of the symptoms of dry weather. Making an application to help that potassium deficiency in most cases probably won't be warranted until we get more rain to help correct some of those issues. We'll also watch for spider mites beginning to show up moving into some of the soybean fields as, as time progresses as well. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.